So objectives 9, 10, and 11 are really very similar. These are three processes that IB feels you should be aware of because they're a big deal in the chemical world. So I want to just focus on the significance of each of them. The Haber process is all about producing ammonia, NH3, which is, allows us to grow enough food to feed 6 billion people. It's estimated that at least 2 billion people would starve to death if we did not have this process available. Of course, it also means that we have greater capacity to make explosives and hurt people as we have in a number of wars throughout you know, the ages since World War I when it was invented. So there's downsides to it too. The contact process and the production of methanol are both much more about industry. Sulfuric acid, which SO3 is combined with water to finally produce the sulfuric acid, and the step shown here is the second or the rate limiting step, um, is the most widely used chemical in the world. We produce tons of it a year. And then methanol, we also produce a lot of it, but it's produced mostly to help make other things. So they both have their significance in industry. So what they want to know is how do you balance rate with yield and cost? So you're looking at a couple of different issues, but what all three reactions have in common is they're all exothermic, as we can see by their negative enthalpy values. And you also notice that each one has more moles of gas on the reactant side and fewer moles of gas on the product side. So what we can do for one reaction to increase rate and yield, we can do for all of them. So for all three reactions, you can optimize yield or increase yield by using a decreased temperature, but your rate is going to fall. So usually they use a moderate temperature. They kind of meet it in the middle, and you might see something around 200, 400 degrees. And then increased pressure, um, because there's more reactant molecule or moles of reactant, you will definitely see an increase in yield by increasing pressure. And then another thing they'll mention is to add a continuous stream of one of the reactants like nitrogen, hydrogen, or oxygen gas. Those are all plentiful gases and easy to just have a stream, you know, a hose just continually blowing it in so that you don't have a limiting reactant in it. And then remove the product as it's being produced, which could be a little bit tricky since they're all gases. But in each case, these gases are more dense than any of the products that you're making, so that will help out. And then um, as far as increase in the rate, your decreased temperature is going to make your rate fall quite a bit. So you kind of meet things in the middle by using what we call a moderate temperature, which really 400 degrees Celsius, believe it or not, is considered moderate, but rather than doing it at room temp. And then the other big thing is to use a catalyst. All three of these equations use a catalyst to help the speed, help the rate stay up. And they used to ask you to know what the catalyst is. Now they'll just mention it as they're talking, you know, iron is used in the Haber process process as a catalyst, and you just need to know what the catalyst does. So the catalyst is all about bumping that rate back up, even though it's not going to affect equilibrium. And then the cost and safety issues is that anytime you do a higher temperature and higher pressure, your cost goes way up. So that's another reason for using the moderate temperature. It doesn't um, drive your rate quite so low, and it doesn't drive your cost quite so high. And then pressure, after about 200 atmospheres, the cost gets really high and the safety issues become a bit alarming. So that's kind of the threshold for pressure. But those are the big topics that IB wants you to talk about as far as uh, balancing equilibrium and rate with your cost when producing these three common chemicals.